much. Hallelujah. Great. Hallelujah. Can you hear now? Can you hear? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful to have Nanny with us today. You know, life is full of surprises, and God has great things for you, and expect miracles. And uh, so we are just so grateful that, uh, you know, situations happen, and, and guess what? He's got something for us in, on the other side. you got to just keep your faith out there. You want to keep your faith uh, engaged when circumstances and surprises come your way. Not get over into fear, but into faith and get your faith out there. Um, and we're going to talk this morning from Daniel chapter 6. I pray this will be blessed you. I'm going to be going through, I've been going through the book of Daniel. And I may just finish it up this week and do it in, every day, but I've just been waiting on the Lord. And um, I'm so uh, thankful for the, the new season that is ahead. And God is um, the, new, the new church that is emerging, that is already established in heaven. And that he wants to be uh, manifest in this realm. And so I, we're going to, as we read Daniel, these are some of the ways that we're going to talk about how he thanked God in an unusual situation. And see, but Daniel knew his God. And in later chapters, it says Daniel, the Bible says that those people that know their God will do great exploits. They that know their God will do great exploits. That means you don't have a head knowledge, just like I know people, oh, that's, you know, maybe that's uh, President Biden. I know that man, but I don't know President Biden. I don't know him personally. I don't, I don't know all of his ways. I'm just using that as an example. Uh, I don't know, you know, I may know somebody from a distance, but I know my God. I know it. I know who he is from his word and his word. He honors his word even above his name. And, and this word is sure. And so let's just go ahead and begin with Daniel chapter 6. We're going to talk about thanksgiving in the midst of difficulties. And I mean, you can, you can sing the song, I'm going to raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. But it's not just about, about saying hallelujah, but believe in it. That the name of Jesus brings victory. Amen. And it is the name of Jesus that you have been given that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And you must. When you call on Jesus in faith, when you call, not just using them as a swear word or just a little thick, funny word that you say here and there, oh, Jesus, Jesus. No, when I say Jesus, I am calling on Jesus to come into this situation with the power that that, that name holds within it to change the circumstances. When you cast out a devil, you don't say hallelujah. You say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Amen. It's not hallelujah. It is in the name above all names. So we do say, sing hallelujah, which is a high praise. Hallelujah. But we say the name of Jesus. Because that is the name by which not only can men be saved, they can be delivered, they can be healed. Everything that saved means. It means Zoe. It means Zoe life. It means whatever you need when you say the name of Jesus, when you place a demand, and, and I place a demand on the name of Jesus because he's given me that name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And at that name, I have authority with that name. It's not my name. It says in the book of Jude, it said when they was, when uh, Moses was contending with the, but when the angels were contending with the body of Moses, uh, the angel said, the Lord rebuke you. In other words, we don't rebuke people. We don't rebuke demons. We don't, in our name, it's in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord Jesus is the one to rebuke, not ourselves. Amen. But Jesus, the name of Jesus and the power of confidence in that name. Hallelujah. And of course, he is living on the inside of us. So our authority, amen, the power of our authority, our authority comes because he lives 
in me. You know, people make fun of me because I I I I I, I I place a demand. They laugh or whatever that my ways. I don't care what they think. I just know that that when God touches me, that the power of God is released. Amen. And and you better you want to get to a point where you don't care what people think. You're going to still place your demand on Jesus. And that's what Daniel did. He didn't have Jesus at the time, but he knew his God. Amen. And when he was getting ready to be thrown in, you know, in, in this situation when he was going to be reprimanded and get ready to be thrown into the lion's den, if he prayed, he went out and prayed anyway. Hallelujah. And you need to do the things God said for you to do, whether somebody is telling you CBC or C whatever, whatever, the CDD, whatever, whoever they say you, you can't do it. You better know your God. And you better follow your God because he's the one that you're going to answer to in eternity. And whether you are moving by fear or faith. And see, we get we, we sit in the seat of the scornful and the way of the sinners. And, the, and we see, listen to these people that don't believe God. They don't know God. They, they're, they're far from God. And we listen to them. We're going to let them tell us what to do. Oh, no. You need to know your God. You need to answer. You need to get in that secret place. And you need to follow what the Lord says. And let God be true and every man a liar. Let's read here in Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, verse 1, which would be set over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no, no damage, have no loss or damage. And Daniel, he was, as Darius came into power, Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because there was an excellent spirit that was in him. He was not like everybody else. He was not, but he was moved by his love for God, his set-apartness, amen? He And everyone knew Daniel was different, okay? Even the king recognized when he put him in office, he knew that he was special, amen? He knew he had heard what was going to happen when Darius came into position. He heard the story about how he had interpreted the writing on the wall, and, 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 and so he, he, he respected and he recognized and he, he, he liked Daniel. Amen. And it doesn't mean that he, he uh, 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 observed and served Daniel's God, but he recognized that God, Daniel's God moved for Daniel. Amen. And so it, and it says Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because he had an excellent spirit in him. The king thought to set him over the whole realm. See, Daniel did things different, right? Daniel got up early and prayed. Daniel fasted. Daniel sought the Lord. He had a full-time job. He was serving and, and, and ministering in a great position, but he set himself to not drink. He set himself to not do certain things or eat certain things. Um, certain items because he was doing that for the Lord. He was said he honored the Lord, just like we read in the book of Jeremiah about the Rechabites. Remember the Rechabites? They didn't. Um, Jer Jeremiah brought the Rechabites out and the sons of the Rechabites and and presented wine to them, and they said, "Oh no." Our father told us not to drink wine. We will not drink wine. We will not drink. They brought all this wine out. He said, oh, no, we're not going to drink wine. We don't do that. Hallelujah. They had an understanding that they had set themselves aside to the Lord and that they were going to defile themselves like other people. that did. He, they, they had made a vow to the Lord, and they kept it. And they and their father had taught them that, and they were set apart and noted in that hour for not drinking wine. It says Daniel was preferred above the presidents because of the excellent spirit that was in him. And the king was getting ready to set him over the whole realm, not just over a third. Then the presidents and the princes, they sought to figure out how they were going to trap Daniel. They had to figure out how they were going to bring him down. And so what they did is they, they realized the only way that they could find an occasion to find fault was where he was serving the Lord. And they said, these men, well, how shall we find any occasion except this Daniel? 
uh, there is not any occasion to find fault because he was faithful and there was never any error or fault in him. And these men said, unless we come against him concerning his law and his habit with God, that's how we're going to trick him. We're going to have to do something that's going to make him uh, disobey God and be forced to disobey God. So if he does that, if he does that, then we've got him. Then we're going to be able to, to take over and, and he'll dishonor God and then we can move in. And it said, and they said, uh, so they, uh, then these three presidents assembled together and they said to King Darius forever, live forever. All the princes, presidents of the kingdoms, the governors, the princes, and the counselors, the captains have consulted together and we're going to establish a new law, a royal law. To make a firm decree that whosoever should ask a petition of any god or man for the next 30 days, except they can only, uh, if, if, if they only ask it in your name as, as a king, if they don't, uh, for the next 30 days, they should be cast into a den of lions. Okay? So now King established this decree and signed the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the men's. Persians, which alter nothing, that nothing will be altered. So King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that, the, now Daniel knew this writing was signed. And what he did, as soon as it, he, he knew it was signed, so he went to his house, amen, hallelujah, just as he, as he had done. And he, he, he says, that when Daniel knew, verse 10, that when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, that he went into his house, opened his windows, hallelujah, in his chambers towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and he prayed. And he gave thanks before his God as he did every other time. Hallelujah. Do you do that? When situations keep trying to detour you, when situations try to exalt themselves and get you from moving forward in faith, from praying, for seeking God, for doing what you know to do, do you let them alter what you're doing? Do you let them take a precedence? Do you let them exalt themselves and come between your faith and confidence? Or do you start to praise God in the midst of the circumstance? Do you elevate and praise him? That's my question to you. Because the, if the devil knows that he can get you to stop doing something that honors him. I've got a headache, so I can't come on Monday. I've got a situation with my family, so I can't get to church on Sunday. I've got a situation here, so I can't do... It, you know, every time that, that you let something like that detour you, the devil knows it. It works. Hallelujah. It works, and so he... Wants to use it again and again, and he'll keep giving, dishing it out until you decide somewhere you draw the line and say, Enough, devil, you've taken this, you've taken pain in my body, you've taken my husband, you've taken this, and then you stand up and resist in the name of Jesus. So today, I don't know what circumstances you allowed to push you back, to keep you back, to keep you from moving forward in Christ. But I tell you today, you need to speak to that mountain of obstacle or that situation that's come against you. And in the name of Jesus, say, I rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You be still. You be silent. You go from me now in Jesus' name. Pain in my body. Go from me now in Jesus' name. I am, I am healed in the name of Jesus. You are the one that has been given authority. He has put you, he has made you to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And this righteousness that comes from within speaks on this wise. Hallelujah. It speaks. It's not to get it from heaven. It's, it's when you speak it, it comes from heaven and is done on earth. Hallelujah. And righteousness speaks on this wise. Don't say, uh, um, to, I need to bring uh, heaven here. But it says this is the word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, when you confess the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I bind your work, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I bind your satanic strategies against my covenant partners and friends in the name of Jesus. I bind your satanic assignment against them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I release, I 
take it from heaven. Hallelujah. I lasso it in the name because Jesus is just waiting for me to take my, my place and stand, hallelujah, in his name. Amen. And put up the shield of faith and use the sword of the spirit. Amen. That quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. Amen. We've got the shield of faith that keeps us, but then we have the sword of the spirit. Amen. That we release. Hallelujah. One for protection. We trust the Lord. He's our shield. Hallelujah. But then the sword of the spirit. We release that word in faith. Amen. Let's go on. So Daniel just started to worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, um, and so let's go back. Let's go down to verse. Um, so verse 10 says, now when Daniel knew the writing was signed. you got to get this. There's going to be some writing signed that tell you you can't do this. There were some writing signed out there in California that they couldn't meet in the church. Now they could meet in the mosque and they could meet over here and they could meet over there. But they couldn't meet in the church and people had to make some decisions. There were some things signed. They had to make a decision that they were going to still worship God. They were going to still pray. They were going to still assemble because that's what God says. Do not forsake the assembling together all the more as you see the day approaching. I don't know about you, but I see the day is approaching of the return of the Lord. And he says, don't separate yourself, but assemble all the more as you see the day approaching. I'm not concerned about getting sick when I approach and I come into the house of God. I'm expecting a healing. I'm expecting a deliverance. I'm expecting God to show up. Hallelujah. I'm not expecting sickness and disease. I'm expecting the demons to flee. Amen. Hallelujah. So you've got to check yourself. You've got to check your mind. You've got to see what do I really believe? What am I doing in that church? Where am I, am I assembling? Is it to gather and to build up my faith and to, and to come up, up higher in my faith? Hallelujah. That's what we're to do. We're to build each other up in faith. And you know what? That their people have stopped listening to faith-filled people. Do you know I talk to people all the time, and I and the Holy Spirit says you got to rebuke that. You don't take that thought. See, you take a thought. If you if somebody's saying something that is against God, and you allow that thought to you entertain it. See, the Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter ten that uh, we've got to take our thoughts captive. You have to take some, somebody introduces to you, it sounds good, but it's not lined up here. Hallelujah. And you've got to take your thoughts captive and say, no, uh-uh, I'm not accepting that. I am, I am lined up like Daniel. I'm worshiping God. I trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, but you take a thought and then you say it and you entertain it in, within you. And you know what? The Holy Spirit knows you're thinking about it. And, and, and the Holy Spirit is your helper. And he should say, and a lot of times he'll say to me, uh -uh, you need a warning. There's something in there you need to get rid of. So you got to, so that's a wrong thought. That doesn't align with my word. Amen. That's our Holy Spirit. He helps you. That's the proof of your down payment. That's the proof that you're his, that the Holy Spirit corrects you. Now, if you don't hear him, then you need to find out why you're not hearing him because he is your helper. Hallelujah. He's the one that he's, he's the discerner of your thoughts. He's the discerner of things that you do wrong. We had a, we were meeting with some people last week and, the, and, and we were, you know, wanting to, you know, kind of help them or submit, you know, honor them and, and, and the years. And you know what? The Holy Ghost gave Pastor Kevin a dream and said, that man's dead. That man's dead. You can honor, you can, you know, honor what he's done, but that work's dead. I'm doing a new thing. He's no longer, there's a, there's a new church emerging. You better get a, get a revelation of it. It's a new church. Hallelujah. It's a glorified church. Amen. It's she's a bride is preparing herself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they look like Daniel. They're set apart like Daniel. It says here, and it says, then these men assembled. They found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. They came near and they spoke before the king concerning the king's decree. And they said, didn't you? Didn't we just get you to sign this decree that every man would have to ask a petition 
uh, that, that asked a petition of any God in the next 30 days, they'd have to ask to, it to you. And, 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 and the thing is true according to the law of the Meds and Persians, which alter not. Then answered they and said before them, King, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, they're not regarding you. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. And they that you signed, but he's making this petition to another God. Three times a day, I'm making my petition to the most high God. You better be making your petition to the most high God. Hallelujah. They put your masks on, said you can't worship, said you're not supposed to sing, said you're not supposed to do this, and a lot of you just went along with it. Hallelujah. But you know what? You've got to, you've got to establish yourself. You've got to reset if you're off. You've got to reset. Press the reset button on your computer. You don't have to reset. You, you need to reset and locate where you are in faith and get back up. Get back up. Even, if, even though you may have walked in fear, walked in this, in, in this season, repent. Repent. That's your job. Repent before the Lord and say, Lord, I am going forward. I am believing you. Forgive me for, for, for backing down, for not believing your word. Your word says that by your stripes I was healed. It says here, now, um, it says, Then the king, when he heard these words, he was so displeased in himself. He set his heart on Daniel. He was not sure how he was going to deliver Daniel. He loved Daniel, this king, but he was tricked. And he labored till the going down of the sun. Hallelujah. And, and then the king's same men came throning in agreement to the king, saying, we're going to send, O oh king, um, um, we need to send Daniel into the lion's den. And so then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast, into the den of lions. And the king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. Do, it, do you know that your God has to deliver you? That you serve him? And it isn't a COVID shot. It isn't a mask covering you. It isn't this, this, and this. It isn't a standing in a funny way or, or saying Hail Marys. It is your God. And if you know your God, hallelujah, you will do exploits. It's, he is the most high God. Hallelujah. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is El Shalom. He is El Shaddai. He is El Elyon. He is El. Hallelujah. Amen. He is Jehovah. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is your provision. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is my victory. Hallelujah. I go through the names of Jesus. I go through the names of my host, most high God. I study them again. I go through. I need to remind myself because I leap of who I am serving. And who is with me in this fiery furnace or in this den of lions? That it is the most high God. Hallelujah. The possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to know your God. Hallelujah. You to recognize that you're not in the place. Recognize, locate your faith. And how do you build your faith? You feel, build it by hearing. I have a whole list of names of Jesus. I go through those names and exalt them. I change the atmosphere when I start to go and I start to confess the names of Jesus. I have about, I don't know, 500 names of Jesus. But every time I start to say one of them, glory to God, the presence of God shows up. Hallelujah, because he is altogether lovely. He is the fear of 10,000. Hallelujah, he is my Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's my kinsman redeemer. Hallelujah, he's my husband God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So let's, so who is your God? Do you know your God? Do you know him? Are you personally acquainted with your God? In the secret place, in the midnight hour, when there's no one there and it's just you, do you know your God? Do you know that it doesn't matter to live as Christ 
and to die is gain. Do you believe that? See, Daniel had a hold of that. That it to live would be glorification, but if even if he died, he would still glorify God with his last breath. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God be true and every man a liar. It says in verse 6, it, verse uh, 16, then the king commanded and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. And the king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you are serving continually, deliver you. You've got to get to a place where it's not a ministry, where it's not this, but it is your God that delivers you. It is your, he is my God. Amen. My, my deliverer. That song, he's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my king. He's got to be personal. It's not enough that he's uh, uh, Joanne's or, or uh, Mary's or any. It's he's got to be your personal savior. Amen. It says here, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring. And with the signet of his lords, that there might be no change of purpose concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace. Look what he did. The Daniel Daniel's Darius went to his palace, and he interceded that night for his friend. Even though his friend didn't serve the same God, he interceded for his friend. I, you know, there have been times a spirit of intercession will come on me for a friend, for a, a co-laborer. I can't, I don't, I can't make it come. I, it just comes by the spirit, and I will have groanings and I will travail. But I know when the Holy Spirit comes on me to pray, He has. Some, there was a, there was a, a situation that was a, a, a potentially death. But as I, the Holy Spirit working through me, prayed and interceded, there was a deliverance. And I trust the Holy Spirit when I get victory. Amen. Because when I get that note of victory, I know that God is. Has broken through. There's the the Lord is called the Lord Par, uh, Balparison, the Lord of the breaking through. He's the Lord of the breaking through for you today. He is the Lord of the breaking through for me today. Hallelujah! I don't know about you, but I need the Lord to break through for me, to break through against the enemies that I don't even know are out there. He is Balparison, the Lord of the breaking through. Amen. Is he that for you today? Glory to God. He is for me. It says here in uh, verse, verse um, 18, So the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music or dancing girls brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den and to Daniel, he cried out in a voice of anguish. The king said to Daniel, Oh, Daniel! Servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve continually, able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God, he sent his angel, and he has shut the lions' mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent and blameless before him, and also before you, O king, hallelujah, O king, as you very well know, I have done no harm to you, king. See, Daniel was able to serve his king, even though he didn't believe like he, like he believed, he was able to honor the position of that king and serve and do his very best to honor the man in authority. I, it's not for us to judge a person, but if a person is in authority, we are called to pray for those in authority over us, that we will live a peaceable life, not to continue to cause uh, strife and debate, but to get up under and to pray, because the Bible promises that those people that know their God if they seek me and they know me, hallelujah, he says, if you pray, I will be found by you, amen, and I will heal your land, and I 
forgive your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. If my people will humble. Hallelujah. Will humble. Will stop looking at this and that and humble themselves and pray for this nation. Hallelujah. Not that they would have, that it would be their way, but that God's will and God's will is being done. I want you to know he is not wringing his hands over this presidential uh, uh, switch of change. He, he has not been heaven and he says, I he, he, he laughs. Amen. God play, God laughs at, at the end because God already knows we the end from the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. And guess what? The kingdoms of the Lord in Christ, the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of this of our Lord in Christ. Amen. Not in Democrat, Republican, or black, white, purple, uh, Asian, whatever. But the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord in Christ. Hallelujah. It is the anointed one and his anointing that breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. That sets the captives free. Hallelujah. The anointing, the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Which is upon me and upon the believer. Hallelujah. But if you are still crying over this and not wielding the, the authority that God has given you, then you're in park. Get to, got to get back in to drive, amen, and start releasing your faith. We're going to go for a few minutes. I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures about what happens, and the Lord quickened one to me yesterday as Pastor Kevin was, was speaking because we don't understand how the word works and how when we release our faith in the word, it does perform, but it does perform because Jesus is right now in heaven watching over his word to perform it. Hallelujah. He is watching over his word to perform it. When we say his name or we take this word and we release it into this atmosphere, God, Jesus paid the price for every jot and tittle. As I read Daniel, he is watching over this word. Whether you're receiving it or let your, or you let the cares and the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke it out. See, all these situations with family and this, you can allow that to cloud you and to get your faith off of Jesus is coming. Jesus is doing a work that if he told me, I wouldn't believe it. Amen. I wouldn't believe he'd send me in this direction. But guess what? We are going to go this direction. And God's with us. He didn't leave us on the way. Amen. And so this is what, so this is what, um, um, so God and Daniel's response was, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angels and he has shut the lion's mouth. Do you believe we release our angels to accompany, preserve, and defend us? I shared a couple weeks ago how when we were over in Vero um, and that Hurricane Sandy was coming to the house and um, was coming to our uh, to the property, you know, coming to a cup of, to the coast there that day. And it was th uh, Thursday night. We went over there, and it was coming supposed to come in at ten o'clock Friday morning. It was Hurricane Sandy to that coast, and in the middle of the night, I rose up. I was sleeping, and I those the the word inside of me woke up my natural man and said. No plague or calamity shall come near my tent, for you stationed your angels in charge over me to accompany, preserve, and defend me in all my ways. Hallelujah. That word, hallelujah, is true over me, over my tent. That was my tent right there. That was my tent was right there on the ocean where the, where the enemy was bringing in a storm. But on my spirit, Hallelujah. My spirit ran, man woke up the natural man and to utter the oracle, to utter the decree, to establish in this realm what was to happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sometime in the, I don't know, I was up, I think, before I woke up. Hallelujah. That's why we put the word in. So this word, hallelujah, this in, in, inside of us, it rises up. To defeat the lies of the enemy. And it's not mental ascent. It's meditation. 
It's taking it. It's pondering. It's muttering it. It's thinking about it. It's aligning your lives with it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not mad at you, but I am speaking loud. Sorry. I'm excited about this word. And so Daniel, so verse 22, my God, he says, has sent his angels to shut the lion's mouth so that they may not hurt me because I was found innocent and blameless before him and also before you, O king, as you very know well, well, well know, I have no harm or wrongdoing. And then the king was exceedingly glad. He commanded that Daniel should be taken up out of the den and so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no hurt of any kind was found on him because he believed in, relied on, and adhered and trusted his God. Hallelujah. The king commanded and those men who had accused Daniel, they were brought and cast into the den of the lions. They and their children and their wives and before they even reached the bottom of the dead, the lions had overpowered them and broken their bones in pieces. So it wasn't even the people that had accused them, but their children and their other. I tell you, you don't want to touch the anointed of God. You don't want to make fun of things you don't understand. You want to watch your mouth because these people, they came against the anointed of God, a man that had clean hands and a pure heart, hallelujah, that had not lifted his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully, hallelujah, hallelujah. You, I tell you, you don't touch his anointed. You don't get your mouth around people and what they're doing. It's not your business. Let them, they serve God, you let God correct them unless he sends you to correct them. You just, you just pray. The best thing we can do is to pray for people. Hallelujah. I don't like the way they do their ministry. I don't like the well. Oh, you didn't get the, the word from heaven in 2004 and what we were to do. I don't answer to me and we answer to the Lord and what he's told us to do. And if you haven't read lately, you can go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it talks about that there are different administrations of the gifts. Hallelujah. And my administration of a gift may not be your administration. We have to follow the Holy Spirit and how we are to administer the gift that he has given us. Amen. Hey, we're not. We, we like to do all those things. We like to do what that sister over there is doing. That's really fun. We like to do that. But you know what? I can't tell you the amount of times God has restrained me. And so you can't do that. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to do a fashion show. I don't want you to do that. I've called you to a highway of holiness. And it doesn't, and there's not everybody that wants to go that route. Hallelujah. But I'm not responsible. I'm responsible to fulfill the call of God on my life, on what he has said. Even if a pastor does that. You know, there's people that do things, and they will, just because so-and-so does it, they do it. They get all kinds of hormone shots. But it's okay because he, their leader, they, he does that, so we can do it too. They don't go to the Lord. I'm not going to get all that shots. I'm not getting shots. Not getting hormone shots. Not getting COVID shots. Not, the only shot I'm taking is Psalm, is Psalm 91. Hallelujah. I take, so I take Isaiah 53. Those are my shots. Those are my injections. Hallelujah. And some of you need to get your stop, stop taking so many vitamin C's and start to take some of these, these words from the, the scriptures because that is what builds you up. Amen. Is the word of God. And if, you, if your faith is weak, it's because you're in low in your word level. You're not reading the word of God. You're not studying it. You're not confessing it. Amen? And so I know the remedy. I know what it is for me. If I recognize I'm, I'm, I'm weak in an area of believing, I get over to it. I start reading it. I start meditating on it. Amen? Hallelujah. That's what I do. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go on here. We're in verse 23. It says, then the king was exceedingly glad. Oh, let me go down a little further. So the, all, the, all those family, all their children, they died. Then King Darius wrote to all the people, nations, language that dwelled in all the earth. May peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in all of my royal dominion, hallelujah, men must tremble and fear 
before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring and steadfast forever, and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. Hallelujah. And his dominion shall be even to the end of the world. He is a savior and deliverer, and he works signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is our God. Amen. That's your God. And so what did, in verse 16, what did he do? He can continue to give thanks. In Psalm 34, I'm going to give you some scriptures of just about giving thanks. Psalm 34. Hallelujah. Shorabakarabah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When you pray, by the way, it says in the scriptures that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you give thanks well. So just so that you know that when you're praying in the Spirit, the Bible says you give thanks well. So you are giving thanks when you are praying in the Spirit. Now, there are different types of praying in the Spirit, and I'm not going to go through all of them today, but it um, wasn't my intent. But there are different types of just, uh Tongues and interpretation of tongues. Now, the tongues, and there's your prayer language. There's there's praying in um, angels' tongues. There's all kinds of different tongues in that. You can pray um, in the. I I prayed in languages so that people can interpret what I'm praying. God would deliver a language and, and they would understand me in that dialect. There are different things. There's di there are different types of tongues, not just your prayer language. But they all come when you accept the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues in your prayer language. It starts there. You don't get more until you receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit in a baptism. In other words, you're going to place yourself and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not just, it's, it's like, a, I like what Brother Rodney used to say. He said that, that somebody came forward and, and they had watched people, you know, being prayed for. And, and one person did a little, ooh, you know, and another one just started screaming and shouting, fell out under the power of God. And then he got over to pray for the next person in line. And, and that person said, I want the big Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that's me. I want big Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I have big Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you have to yield to the Spirit. See, he doesn't force himself on anyone. It's you yielding and trusting. See, I trust my God. I trust the Holy Spirit. Did you find Psalm 30, 34? Hallelujah. Psalm 34. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes her boast in the Lord. Oh, the humble will hear and they will be glad. Oh, come on, magnify the Lord with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name. Not my name, not how I feel, but let's exalt Jesus' name together. I sought the Lord. He heard me. I sought him. He heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. See, when you seek the Lord, and he will deliver you from all your fears. They looked into him and were light. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man, this, this man cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard me. And he saved me out of all of my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he that trusts in him. Fear the Lord, oh, you his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Fear the Lord as you reverence that you will have no lack. Hallelujah, as you fear the Lord. Hallelujah. The young lions, they lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Any good thing. You shall not want any good thing. Come, you children, and hearken to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips, again, you watch what you say. Keep your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Because the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And their ears are open unto their cry. Hallelujah. The righteous cry and the Lord hear and delivers them out of their trouble. Hallelujah. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And he saves one that has a contrite or flexible or, or, or thoroughly penitent heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. How many? All of them. He will keep all his bones. He will keep all of your bones. Amen. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Is this his word? Is this his word? It is his word. I'm reading his word. Do you believe this word? So it says here, you shall not be desolate. You shall not lack. You need to put him in remembrance of his word. He doesn't get mad when you remind him of his word. Say, Lord, no bones are to be broken in Jesus' name. Now let's look over at Psalm, a couple pages over to Psalm 37. I think you need to have your faith filled up in his word. Amen? Hallelujah. It always does good for me. Now this, I love this passage in Psalm 37 because it's all about fretting. And I give it to people. I've, I've had it for people that were going through divorce and separation. And it talks about fret not. It tends only to evil. Come on. Fret not. It tends only to evil. Amen. It says, it says, be, uh, fret not because of evil doers, neither be envious against those who work on righteousness. For they will be cut off. They will be cut down like the grass. And wither as a green herb. So you need to put put this out there. Read this. Let me go to uh, one of the verses here. And, and this oh, is such a powerful passage. You maybe need to read this aloud today. In 39, let's go over. It says, um, uh, 37 and 40. Uh, it says, hallelujah. The transgressor, transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He will deliver us. He is their strength. He is our strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. In Psalm 50, verse 14 talks about he that offers praise glorifies God. Amen? When you offer praise, you glorify God. But when you order your conversation, your lifestyle, according to his word, then you will see the salvation of the Lord. So even though you might be praising him, and we're even a worship leader, but if you step down from there and you start speaking all manner of, of evil against every other person, it doesn't go well for you. You need to order your conversation to what is really true, what you're singing. That singing, you shouldn't be, when you sing in worship, he doesn't muzzle the ox as you tread the grain. When you are ministering from uh, to the Lord, and that's what we should be doing when we're singing, not performing, but ministering to the Lord in our song. When we minister to the Lord, that ministry, that Holy Spirit fills us and ministers to us. As we are ministering out, we get to eat. We get to eat of what we're ministering, of what we're singing about. Hallelujah. So when you worship, as a worship leader, those so you want to be making sure you line up with what you're singing, amen, because those songs that you are worshiping, 
You eat of those. You're to eat there. It's not to be just going out, but it should be a residual back. Every time you are sharing the word of God, if it's in the right place, it should go. If you're, it's going out and re being received in the hearer, you can feel that it's coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a re it refreshes you. It comes back as, as a flow of a river, you know, a sort of right back to you. When in your worship, when you're leading worship, and you should be worshiping out and into their hearts, but then he comes back and he ministers to you. Hallelujah. And I get it, you want to sound great, but more important, you want to sound great in the ears of the one who is receiving your praise. Amen. Let's go, uh, let me just give you a couple more scriptures. So um, Psalm 50, verse 14, hallelujah. Um, it says, thank you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Amen. It also says at the end of Pat, uh, verse 50, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, I, I, I gave you the wrong scripture. That was offer, verse 14 in, in Psalm 50 is offer unto God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High and call upon me, the Lord, in your day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. And then in verse 23 of Psalm 50, who offers praise glorifies me. But to him that orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of the Lord. Amen. And then in Psalm 116, this was, I was sending this out this morning because I've been there. Uh, I, a lot of people are changing addresses, but I, I know it's a loss to us when they do, but they are not dead. If they are in Christ, they live forever, and we will see them again. Amen? Hallelujah. So I was praying with an intercessor friend this morning, and she had lost a relative um, just, this, just yesterday. And it was a sudden thing. He died in his sleep. But they rejoiced because they knew he was going soon, and he, there were things he wanted done. They got done, hallelujah, and he was ready to go. Even though he was young, there are people crossing over into eternity today. And yes, we think, I'm, I'm, my, my mother-in-law here with us today is 92 years old, hallelujah. She's not planning on going anywhere right now, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, but somebody at 40 or somebody at 30, they're all ready to go, hallelujah. And so um, we don't understand these things. These are over. These are in a different um, arena. We don't get to see into all this uh, this hour. Sometimes you're you're shown. But it says here in Psalm one uh, one sixteen, verse fifteen, two scriptures. One sixteen, verse fifteen. Precious in this is the sight in the sight of the Lord. I want you to have this precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. Amen. When, when you, one of his saints comes to be with him, it's precious to the Lord. Amen. He's welcoming them. It's not a sad day. He is, we are, he are entering into the rest. Amen. What did, what did it say about Jesus? Uh, it said, be it unto me, enter into your rest. Amen. We will, will enter into the rest in Christ. That's our, our total rest is in eternity. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Precious are the death. Is the death of, our, of the saints. And so who do you know your God? Hallelujah. I'm encouraging you to get that word out. Not just have it on the table. But get your word out and start declaring and changing the atmosphere. And release your faith, though you don't even understand sometimes the words you're, you're speaking. But that still it's a seed as it comes out of your mouth that it will take root. That it will speak to you. Amen? Because this is what the word, he's written his word upon your heart. Amen? He will bring your all things to remembrance for you. Amen? I don't know all the scriptures... 
but the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance. Want me to, I'm going to give you one that Lord quickened to me yesterday. Hallelujah. It was, um, thank you, Jesus. Let me just see. Where did I write that down? Huh. Hallelujah. Right here. It's, um, maybe it was Psalm 50. Yeah, it was, some, it was at the beginning of Psalm 50. And he was alerting. He'll, he'll quicken a scripture, and then I have to go look it up to see where it is because I, I know it's from the Lord. And so yesterday in, in worship, before the service, had a special visitor yesterday, Nancy, came and ministered to the Lord with me. It was lovely. Hallelujah. And, um, in, um, and this was what rose up in my spirit. It says, the mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Amen. Out of Zion, when we look to Zion, he is the one that perfects our beauty. God shines forth through us. The Bible says in the olden days that the women of God, the holy women of God, were not in fear as Sarah obeyed her husband, calling him Lord. Amen. And he said, you are her daughters if you have not any fear. See, God is the one that is beautifying us. He's the one that is perfecting us, making us shine like him. Thank you for being with me today. I encourage you to, to spend time praying. Don't let anybody take your your habit of, of calling upon him. If you ha aren't established in praising him daily or three times, make a decision today. I'm going to read your word aloud in my house. I'm going to praise you every day. I'm going to welcome you every morning, Holy Spirit, to have your way in my life. See, he is the third person. He is the active, active agent on the earth. He is the one that inhabits the believers. And so you want to welcome Holy Spirit. Do a work in me today. Hallelujah. Speak to me. Show me which way to go, What? which way not to go. And we give you all the glory and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And I bless you today. And, and again, take that name. You know the name of Jesus. And you rebuke. You use that name. You get it in your mouth. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke this, this sickness in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with me. And we'll see you Wednesday night. Hallelujah. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.